Hi everyone, uh, we're really pleased to be here and be able to talk to you uh, a bit about some of the work that we've been doing together over the past year or so. Um, I did give a brief introduction to some of this work this time last year, um, but this is more detailed and, and showing what we've been up to. So this is Mike Childs um, from Friends of the Earth. Um, and uh, I'll leave you to say a bit more about yourself, and I'm Victoria Hearth uh, from the Marketing Department in the Faculty of Business. This um, piece of work that Victoria's about to talk uh, to is a, uh, a piece of a jigsaw uh, that Friends of Earth trying to create. A couple of years ago I came and presented uh, a three-year research project that we had just launched, Big Ideas uh, Changed the World, where we were looking to try and see what are the big, deep changes across society that are needed if we're going to achieve well-being for people and the planet in the future? Those things obviously being two sides of the same coin. Within a context of uh, rapid global uh, urbanisation, uh, rapid innovation in, in technology, from synthetic biology to advanced robotics to nanotechnology, uh, to a whole host of different uh, technologies, uh, to degraded soils, uh, and degraded wildlife to inequalities, uh, gross inequalities across the world, um, to uh, a disengagement with politics, um, certainly in Western countries, but again across the world, and shifting power, power shifting from the, the, the states that have, uh, had had a large amount of power over the last 50 years, now seeing the rise of the, of the BRIC nations, Brazil uh, and others, uh, but as well shifting power beyond the state to non-state actors as well. So that kind of context, that, that context of a large number of external trends uh, happening out there, uh, some of which uh, uh, can change, some, some of which may not, um, uh, was context this project saying, so how do we find some of the big ideas to get us on the path to well-being? Uh, it's a three-year project, as I said, we're, we're, we're about two-thirds of the way through. Now, before Victoria talks about the area around uh, sustainable marketing and the area around consumption, which we're looking at, uh, I'll just give you a quick snapshot of some of the other areas we've been looking at and they're relevant to some of the presentations we've already, already had. So one area, for example, we're looking at has been women's empowerment. It's virtually absent from the environmental sustainability uh, narrative, uh, absent from work of many involved in environmental sustainability, including Friends of the Earth, um, we've been doing some research to try and identify so how critical is women's empowerment to achieving environmental sustainability, whether that's in terms of natural resource management, through to politics, through to uh, business. We've got a, a book, it's, it's the thing to do, isn't it, plug books. Um, we've got a book coming out in September with writers from across the world, across those different areas, 30 uh, women across the world, uh, I think pretty much nailing that if we want to achieve sustainability, uh, we need to see the environment movement and others campaigning for uh, women's empowerment. Uh, we've been doing some work around sharing and how sharing could be transformative, not just in terms of reducing resource consumption, uh, but also in terms of helping to change the way that people uh, think uh, and the way they are from being perhaps, uh, as societies have driven us to be more kind of individualistic and materialistic, uh, to kicking back against that and changing the, the how we are. Through uh, to uh, looking at uh, education and Paul's uh, excellent presentation there as well. Uh, does education need to change uh, from what uh, has been characterised by some, for example, in recent Compass report of churning out uh, worker ants and turbocharged consumers, actually should empathy be at the heart of education? Should creativity be at the heart of, of education if we're going to generate the kind of innovative solutions we need for the challenges we uh, face. So those are kind of some of the ideas we've been looking at over the last couple of years. We're going to wrap this up, project up in about a year's time, uh, hopefully, hopefully identi identifying 25 to 30 kind of big ideas for going forward, one of which will be uh, what Victor Victoria's about to talk about. So over to you, Victoria. Thank you, Mike. Um, Yes, so the area, um, it falls under the area of consumption and transforming consumption. And really the question that we started with was, how, how can marketing become a force for sustainability? What needs to be reformed about marketing in order for it to become a force for sustainability? I mean, 
marketing is, is, is often criticised as being at the heart of the problem and so therefore needs to be uh, part of that solution. Um, and really marketing is mostly criticised on, well it has two key dimensions really. Um, for successful modern businesses, marketing and management are, are, are highly aligned really. Marketing isn't or shouldn't be a sort of a department on the side, it runs right the way through that business, so all the decisions that are made. Um, but the two realms of um, impact which fall under the, the idea of sustainable marketing is marketing sustainably, and that's everything about the resource impacts that come from marketing decisions around what, how a product is designed, where it's distributed, um, the uh, impacts of promotional activities, etc., etc. Those are all fall very much within the realm of marketing. Um, and that's marketing sustainably. And the other side of it is marketing sustainability. And that's really about behaviour change. It's about um, cultures and identities and the, and the role that marketing can play in that. However, a lot of what's been going on in this space is, is um, fairly uh, fragmented, confused to some extent. There aren't clear definitions about what we're talking about here. There's certainly no roadmap to say for actors like Friends of the Earth, OK, so you're a sustainable company, so show me your sustainable marketing then. You know, what does that look like? How do you judge that? Um, and how do we drive momentum in this quite complex and difficult area? Um, so, the starting point for the research uh, is myself and uh, some colleagues, and thank you to the ISSR who were uh, um, important in bringing us together on this topic. Um, the starting uh, point is really that there's actually a lot going on. Um, if you look around, there, there are quite a few... Um, um, well, we know a lot about what needs to be done, and a lot of the CEOs of large companies are starting to really get that. And increasingly, you're hearing some quite radical views coming out from um, CEOs like Paul Polman, who's, you know, say the sort of poster child of that, but also in Cheshire from B&Q and Kingfisher, who really get this. They don't just sort of get it, they really get it. Um, and that's very inspiring. However, the experience within those kinds of companies and in general is that actually getting, creating change on the ground, however, is not that easy. Um, and if you imagine that obviously the, the issues that might be created from marketing, as in any other sphere, are, are around hundreds of million little decisions that are being made by individual actors. So although we might criticise this kind of blob of marketing, actually these are just people on the ground doing their jobs. And I think uh, what, that was our starting point really about how, how can we try to understand what the blockages are, what are the barriers, and how do we get through them. So, um, so what... Um, we did is we, um, we, we noticed, first of all, there's a lack of clarity. We need to build some kind of standardisation. And we had in our mind what might a voluntary code um, or a framework look like. Um, and then we came up with, um, uh, having reviewed all the literature, came up with uh, six key areas that we feel um, that can be changed, that these are barriers that can be turned into foundations, um, of which organisations can move towards. So the first is about looking at real needs, and that means um, looking really at what um, co companies and marketers looking at what their customers really need. And I think what Bob's um, presentation earlier was a wonderful example um, of putting customers really at the needs of your customers really at the heart of everything you do. Secondly, it's about leadership. Marketing doesn't like to recognise that it changes our identities, it changes our culture. And I think until we really get acknowledgement within marketing, it can't harness that power. Um, putting relationships at the heart of everything, again, that fits in with what Bob was um, uh, showing us that's happening uh, in his case study, really saying not just, you know, buzzword relationship marketing, but really putting those deep relationships um, at the heart of everything. Bringing the long term into the, the room, short termism is, a, is, a, is being increasingly recognised as one of those core issues um, and that needs to be brought into marketing decisions. Um, defining measurements of progress, we need good KPIs, good key performance indicators to show uh, movement in this and ho hopefully working with the uh, international integrated reporting framework to build up those sector marketing specific indicators. And also finally putting marketing at the heart of strategy because um, 
there's no point marketing being really good, having great connections with customers, really designing things that can deliver well-being in the long term for minimal resources, if it's not actually able to take that customer uh, need into the heart of the strategy of the organisation. So, we uh, very briefly, we... Uh, so, so, so the idea behind this is a, is a new phase of marketing effectively, and that helps conceptualise it. Basically, a shift from kind of making and selling to sense and provide where many people are, uh, marketers are now, but actually to a place where marketing is about guiding and co-creating to sustainability. Uh, we tested that idea with a bunch of uh, marketing experts. There's a beautiful picture of a round table. There you go. We had a round table and people sitting around it from Marks and Spencers, uh, B&Q, Royal Mail, uh, some various people in agency, about a dozen people. And broadly speaking, they gave the thumbs up to this as an idea, as it's got legs, it's something we should develop further and take forward. And that's part of the collaborative approach that the Big Ideas project is, is trying to bring. Collaboration in terms of identifying the issues, collaboration in terms of reaching out to academics and others to understand issues and identify interventions and then collaboration to take those interventions forward and hope, hopefully make them uh, real and real world change through them. So in conclusion, the next steps are uh, we're going to start working with a small group um, of uh, companies that might want to refine this into some kind of standard and guidance that could be taken out and tested in those organisations in an action research. We're going to look at seeking some funding to take that forward. Um, and I'd like to speak to the Charitable Foundations people because I think that could be a good way forward. It's a, quite a radical intervention that could really change things. Um, and if successful, potentially look at a national or international standard. I work for ISO on um, sustainability uh, indicators and that's something that, you know, for the longer term could happen and, and make this idea, this big idea, something that changes the world. Um, and uh, launched today is the report and there's a briefing document and if you're interested in the full report, you can get it online. Line, but also there are copies um, on the futures stand. So uh, yeah, I invite you to look at that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much.